Oh, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of UGUE Brothers Vlogs, guys. Got a brand new episode of Savage Kitchen ready for you. As a matter of fact, I've actually got three more videos in addition to this planned. I think I'm going to try to get these done this week. I am so excited. I am geared up for so much content on this channel as well as the main channel. <sighs> it's awesome. It's awesome. So, guys, I've got another chicken dinner recipe for you guys that I did in the Ninja Foodie. Man, I've done so much in this so far, and gosh, I love this machine. The Instapot and the Ninja Foodie machines are freaking amazing. Definitely worth a buy. I know they can be pricey, but man, they take so much off the table when it comes to cooking, and you don't need a ton of skill to cook in them, which is amazing. Oh man, I made an entire chicken dinner and it only took me eh, about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. An actual cook time for the chicken is really only about five minutes. There's some things you gotta you gotta release the pressure or whatever that took a little bit more time. But at the end of the day, super fast, super easy, pretty much one pot recipe, and it was done and it was delicious. Guys, if you're thinking about getting an Instapot and a Ninja Foodie or whatever, and you're on the fence. Do it, do it, because it is amazing. My next recipe is another chicken recipe. I'm gonna do a whole chicken. I tested this recipe out already. <clears throat> I'm probably gonna change some things up, try to get interesting with it in terms of spices, but at the end of the day, it's so easy to cook. I'm doing a whole chicken in the Ninja Foodie, and then I got a couple more recipes that don't include the Ninja Foodie, so be ready for that. I'm actually doing a dessert. I know I'm trying to be healthy right now, <laughs> but I am going to do a dessert because I think the last dessert was like during the holidays, so I'm ready to get one out for you guys. And it's super fun and easy and exciting because it's actually a microwave recipe, which is really, really interesting and fun. So be ready for that. Anyway, guys, let's get cooking. All right, kids, so I'm so excited about this recipe. This is so delicious. Now, I have made this previously, and uh, I loved it. And a lot of you guys asked me to make a video, so I did. I decided to go ahead and make this video, and I cooked this in my Ninja Foodie, guys. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to use the Ninja Foodie like I did. You can cook this regular with just a pan and a pot for your rice, um, but I chose to use the brand new Ninja Foodie. Guys, if you haven't gotten one of these or an Instapot or anything like that, man, these are so freaking awesome, and they replace so many things. And the cool thing is you don't really need a lot of skill to use it. Um, so the first thing you want to do here is go ahead and take off your pressure lid. Uh, your Ninja Foodie has two different lids. It has your crisper lid, and it has a uh, pressure lid and take out the trivet that's inside. We're going to need that, but just set that aside. Um, now I used, um, turmeric, paprika, and Italian seasoning, and of course some salt and pepper here for my marinade. Um, you can use whatever spices you like. Um, but this is a cool way to do a marinade. I saw this online, decided to try it. It worked fantastic. Um, so first thing, I just go ahead and put some olive oil, use some extra virgin uh, into a bowl and, and mix my seasonings in. Um, again, you're gonna do this to taste, so it's really up to you, but I use about two tablespoons-ish of each seasoning, just really depends. Um, but make sure you do taste your marinades, you taste your rubs. It is so very important that it fits your flavor profile, so always taste them. Make sure they stand out, make sure you get all the different flavors, make sure they do mix. Um, I decided to use turmeric here. We've been hitting the gym a lot. Turmeric is great because it has an anti-inflammatory property to it. It also has a very sweet taste to it, which is really awesome. It's very different. Um, and I use paprika. Um, now, smoked paprika probably would have been better here. I just didn't have any on hand, but paprika is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spice. So I use it in a ton of stuff. Um, and then, of course, your Italian seasoning is just really bold, bold, multiple different seasonings involved there, and it's just wonderful. And then salt to pepper to taste. And then I just gave it a nice mix-up, nice mix-up. Uh, again, always, 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 always remember to taste your rubs and your marinades. Uh, it is so important. Um, now, I just gave it a pat dry on my chicken breasts. It's always important to do that uh, before you stick them anything or before you cook, just to make sure there's no icky stuff on them. Um, and I use just a, a glass 
last container here uh, to get everything ready because I'm going to go to marinate my chicken. Now, ideally, you want to marinate a long time. The longer, the better, right? So 24 hours is awesome. Um, I did it for about 30 minutes to an hour. Still worked. Um, the last time I did it, I did it for 24 hours, um, and it worked fantastic. Uh, just gives it a little bit longer to sort of absorb all those flavors, but it's okay. But 30 minutes to an hour is fine in the fridge. And I use glass here just because um, plastic tends to wear out, tends to absorb flavors, and I don't like that. So I use these glass containers instead. I'm going to stuck that in the fridge. Um, now I'm using brown rice here. You can use quinoa. You can use any kind of rice you want. I use brown rice just because I wanted a complex carb. I didn't want a simple carb. Again, Joe and I have been really hitting the gym. Plus he's, you know, had issues with his sugar and a complex carb is just always a better choice in those cases. Um, now brown rice, I know doesn't really have a ton of flavor, but in this, in this, in this, it soaks up all this wonderful chicken flavor and it's amazing, you'll see in a second. Um, now, the cool thing about the Ninja Foodie does a lot of different things. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is use the, use the uh, sear saute feature. I just basically push the button, set it to high, push start, and I'm gonna let that preheat for a little while, get nice and hot. And I'm just gonna put a little oil in the bottom of it. You don't usually use a lot because first of all, that bowl in there is ridiculously nonstick. I mean, I've used it so much and I've never gotten anything to stick to that stink a bowl. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's wonderful. It's like freaking magic. So easy to clean. Um, just a little bit of oil. Um, also, it absorbs it, it, the oil down there absorbs a lot of the flavor of the chicken when it cooks, and you'll see what I'm gonna, gonna do with that in a second. It's super important. Um, so I took my chicken out. I'm gonna go ahead and put all three chicken breasts in the bottom of the pan and get that nice and brown. That's gonna go ahead and seal in all those nice flavors of the spices. It's gonna get a nice little crust on the outside of your chicken. It's also gonna seal in the juices inside the meat. So that's super, super important. Um, and I have the smaller Ninja Foodie, so you can fit a, probably about four chicken breasts in here. Um, I did I did three just because I, I just got a three pack from Publix. So I only had three chicken breasts, but you can see there's room for a fourth if you want to. Uh, so it's great. You can make an entire meal one pot for an entire family real easy um, and it's so fast if you need more than this you can just do another batch uh, but once you see your chicken start to get a nice outer color coating nice brown on the outside just go ahead and flip them and uh, brown the other side it's probably a couple minutes per side about two minutes one minute and a half two minutes per side is usually good depends on how big uh, those breasts are um, but you get a nice color. And you see how good of a color that is with those spices starting to really show up. You see sort of a, a yellowing from the turmeric on the outside. just starts to look beautiful. And by now, guys, the aromas, oh, my God, smells so amazing. Oh, oh, I'm getting hungry right now just looking at this video right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So once you get a nice color coat, Turn the Ninja Foti off um, so it stops the heat and just take the chicken out, set it aside for a second. Now you see all those wonderful flavors down there. Oh my God, you do not want to waste those. You do not want to waste those. So leave that down in the bottom and put your liquid down at the bottom. When you're pressure cooking, you always want to do that with liquid, liquid. Um, now if you have chicken broth, you can use chicken broth or bone broth or whatever kind of broth you want or any other flavor profiles you want. I just use water just to save some time. I didn't have broth on hand, so I just used water. Uh, just sort of give that a nice stir up, get all those flavors and things off the bottom and mixed up inside your liquid uh, broth or water or whatever you choose to use, and then put your rice in. Again, I used about a cup and a half uh, of rice here and about a cup to a cup and a half of water, and just give that a nice stir. Make sure all those nice, wonderful flavors are evenly distributed around the rice this is. And let me tell you, man, when this is done, that rice is going to taste phenomenal, let me tell you. Uh, go ahead and put your trivet in. Um, I put it at the lowest setting. Um, you probably could put it at the highest setting. I don't, I don't know, but I like the lowest setting because I feel that with the chicken, more flavor from the chicken breast get into the rice. With, with the dark meat, you probably could do it on the higher setting because there's more fat in it. Uh, but with the chicken breast, there's less fat. So I just put it on the lowest setting like that. And I just put my chicken breast, 
back in on that trivet again there's still like i said there's still plenty of room for at least one more chicken breast if you want to do four at a time um not a problem but three fits real nice go ahead and turn your footie back on put your pressure lid back on the cool thing about this is when it's on it starts to register the lid which is really really cool because you see i'm having sort of like a trouble like a problem putting this thing on for some reason right now and the ninja foodie tells you when it's engaged so it's pretty cool once you have it engaged just go ahead and put pressure make sure it's on high and dial it in for five minutes that's all you need five minutes and hit start and you see the little spinny spins that's telling you that the pressure is starting to build in your pressure cooker which is really cool now don't forget to check to make sure that the vent is set to seal not vent otherwise you're wasting your time <laughs> so always 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 check and uh so now after five minutes, you'll see that that uh, the warmer light comes on. You see that at the bottom. It says warm or keep warm, and the timer starts to go up. This is called natural release. So it's actually steadily releasing the pressure naturally from the lid. Um, there's a difference between actually quick, quick release and natural release, and different recipes call for different times, so just sort of be cognizant of that. Uh, for this, you want eight minutes eight minutes of natural release and then once that eight minutes is up then you can go ahead and turn your knob there from seal to vent and let the rest of it out you see there's not a ton of steam that comes out uh, at all but you'll see that little red thing that's actually a pressure indicator when the pressure is fully released and i think you could probably tell that button is starting to sort of go down um, once the once the pressure is completely out that button is completely down and that's when you know the 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 steam or the pressure is completely gone and it's safe to open the lid you do not want to open a, a pressure cooker lid when it's still under pressure because that will not be fun for you. <laughs> so just be cognizant. Even though you don't see steam, just make sure that that button is completely down before you try to open the lid. Sometimes you just need to touch it or whatever, and it'll drop just to be safe. Just be very, very, very careful um, when, you're, when you're dealing with a pressure cooker because it could be dangerous opening that. Plus, steam is freaking hot. So... It's not fun to get burnt with the steam. See, I just had to help it out and it just completely dropped. You see the rest of that steam sort of just escaped. So now I know it's safe and I went ahead and opened to reveal the beauty of this magical, wonderful, mouthwateringly scrum deliumptualist dish. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. Now this is chicken, so I always want to be safe. Um, so I just gave it a touch. It feels done to me. Um, and just as an added precautionary measure, I have a meat thermometer that I grabbed and I just went ahead and poked that in there and make sure it's at least uh, 165 degrees Fahrenheit is a done temperature for chicken. So just go to sort of the biggest section of it and poke your little doodad in there in the meat and make sure it goes up to at least 165 just to make sure it's done uh with chicken just i don't know poultry you do not want to mess around with that so just i check and double check and once and once i know it's done i'm good i'm happy so over 165 degrees fahrenheit done and just pull those out <clears throat> pull those out and we're all done look how beautiful those chicken breasts is are Oh my god. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Man. And all those seasonings held to the chicken, which is one cool thing about the oil I find. The oil actually helps the the seasonings bind better to the outside of the chicken so you don't get it all just off scraping off the chicken and falling off the chicken. Um now the rice is pretty much done. I gave it a stir. You see a little bit of chicken bits in there, which is awesome. Um, I did have a little bit extra water in here. Don't worry about that. If that happens, um, just go ahead and put the pressure lid back on and just pressure cook it for another like two minutes to five minutes. It's fine. Um, I had a little bit extra, so that's what I did. But that's sometimes that happens. But look how wonderfully 
amazingly juicy that chicken looks and see the see how like that rice looks different than standard round rice because it soaks up all the wonderful juices from the chicken and everything that was in the bottom of that pan oh my god the flavors are spectacular spectacular and like i said brown rice is usually pretty boring and dull but man even quinoa with this like sort of earthy flavor is just just explodes with flavor when you cook it with like chicken in there oh my goodness and i just tried a little piece and wow juicy juicy typically with chicken breast now make sure you when you take it out you do let your chicken breast rest for a little while just make sure those juices go back in um but man it was wonderfully good one intense flavors juicy chicken that rice of course like i said spec freaking tacular and of course i had um i had just a nice salad mix that i got from Publix uh to add with it just to get my veggie tables in uh because that is muy importante uh to get your vitamins so this is just the kale cabbage mix and it's uh, an asian one so it's got like um a wonton crisp in it and some and it's like an avocado dressing avocado lime dressing which is wonderful and look how beautiful this dish is it's freaking uh, amazing and it's so easy so easy boom all right guys i hope you like the video man these things are so much fun to do i mean this whole vlog is about just other things we like to do and interesting stuff that we like to do and uh, i'm having a blast and i got so much planned like i said so much plan in terms of content to bring it out to you guys and oh i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait i want to get it all done now i'm just like going crazy anyway guys so much going coming out so please hit that bell notification button so you know when you get new videos out and you can stay up to date always comment like subscribe help that helps me grow the channel guys if you are interested in any merchandise like this shirt awesome stay savage shirt that i'm wearing right here check us out at ugebrothers.com we also have teespring set up as well with a ton of cool stuff that should be down at the bottom of the video on the little trail bar as well as the merchandise or store section i can't remember what it's called on youtube on our page <coughs> on both pages or actually it should only be on the main page i think urban ghost so we always have that available for you guys. So definitely check that out. If you're interested in cameos, of course, check that out. We are on Cameo. Go to cameo.com or you could download the smartphone app, Cameo. Just look us up. We'd be happy to do some awesome shout out personalized videos for you guys. Um, I guess that's all. Until the next time, guys. Peace.